Hello and welcome to the 2020 virtual conference for the National Exchange Club. My name is Detective Rich Wostocki. My partnership with the Exchange Club started in Naperville. A lot of you have come to the conference over the years and I'm going to miss all of you today with your fellowship and your meetings and those great uh, room hopping events that we have. Unfortunately, because of COVID, we have to do it this way. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Detective Rich Wostocki. I've been a police officer for 28 years in the city of Naperville, and I belong to the Naperville Exchange Club. I've been part of the Exchange Club since about 2011, where the Exchange Club and the Naperville Police Department has a collaboration in teaching kids how to be safe online. Now, as you well know, one of our missions is to eradicate all forms of child abuse, and that includes online child abuse and child exploitation. Through a partnership with the Naperville Exchange Club and the National Exchange, over the last few years, we have embarked on many initiatives to make our kids safe online and on their devices. In this virtual training, I want to show you a new program we have developed. As a result of COVID, I was teaching all over the United States. When COVID hit, all the schools across the United States had canceled. And that's about 20 schools. Over the past year, from I'd say November to March of 2020, I taught in 25 schools across the country. I taught in Oregon, Florida, Georgia, Oklahoma, New York, Texas. Out of those 25 schools that I taught at, my job is to empower kids how not to be victims. Out of those 25 schools that I taught at, 16 children came forward saying that they were being abused at that point in time when my message to them is no one has the right to make you feel bad about yourself or to make you do something you know you shouldn't be doing. So if those are 16 kids and those are the only ones we know about that felt comfortable enough to come forward to me, Imagine how many more kids are suffering from cyberbullying, sexting, and sextortion. When all the schools shut down and I was unable to reach more kids and save them, I was perplexed. And I wanted to find a way to get to the masses. So I started doing a virtual training. I went back in the studio in Naperville. And we created an amazing three-part video series. It's called CyberParenting-101.com. We now have training online for students with a curriculum that there's tests and topic points. The parent presentation. We know how many parents cannot keep up with their kids' technology. And we have a faculty presentation. When a kid discloses that something is going on with them online, the school faculty knows exactly what to do. So what I want to do in this training is that I want to show you some of the topics that we're going to cover in this online video training. And I want to give this to all exchangeites to bring it back to your school districts. And we can have a positive impact with the sponsorship from exchange to the schools and save more children than you can ever imagine. Now I wanted to let you know that I am available personally to come to any one of your schools in your jurisdiction. And I've done that. I recently went to Georgia, trained school resource officers and school officials from the Georgia Statesboro Exchange Club. We went to Owatonna, Minnesota with Katie. And there we saved three kids after the speaking event. So I want you to know that what I'm about to tell you doesn't happen somewhere else. It happens everywhere. It doesn't discriminate. The average internet predator who will abuse children online, ladies and gentlemen, can have up to 250 victims in their lifetime. 250. What happened to me in 2018, I was asked to do a TED Talk. When I did a TED Talk or a TEDx, we did it on parents' responsibility for kids' technology. 
And I'd like to show you what that TED Talk was as part of this training. So here we go. What is he doing on that phone? How many of you have asked that same very question to the teens in your life? What the heck are they doing on that phone? Good evening, my name is Detective Rich Wostocki. I've been a police officer for 30 years, my last 22 years with the city of Naperville investigating computer crime and protecting children online. I'm about to say something that may upset you. If you want to get up and leave or turn off this program, I get it. But it takes someone like me to tell it to you, to your faces, what's going on. And here it is. All of you here tonight are responsible for your children. I'm sorry I just upset you. <laughs> but it's true. You see, you're not only responsible for your children with their food, clothing, shelter, and education, you are responsible for their technology as well. Because if you're not checking their Roblox, their Minecraft, their Musical.ly, their Snapchat, their Instagram, if you're not checking contacts, monitoring remotely, having that technology talk with them, somebody else will be. Is that what you want? You see, ladies and gentlemen, when we give our children at the ripe old age of 11 this ominous device, it's like giving them the keys to your brand new Mercedes and going, sweetheart, you can go to Vegas, you can go to Florida, you can go to New York, wherever you want to go. And when you come back, mommy and daddy will fill that tank up and you can just go again. But just don't tell us if you did anything wrong. Because you never would do that, would you, sweetheart? No, mom. You see, ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about what we are responsible for, I travel all over the United States teaching in schools. When I teach my students, I talk to them about their contacts. We talk about verification, that they have to know before they release any personal information, five things. First name, last name, where they go to school, their phone number, and where they live. If you can't physically verify what those things are, like Jimmy in my gym class lives there, Sarah on my soccer team lives there, and she placed her at team, that's a verification. I tell them that everyone else online is a liar. That is your base when you're traversing online. So let's talk about how you talk to your kids. What is your current technology talk to your kids? Does it go something like this? If you take bad pictures, if you take bad video, if you tell people where we live, you're gonna be grounded. I'm gonna take your phone away. You're not gonna see the light of day, you're not gonna go out your front end, the door's gonna come off the hinges of your bedroom. If you do that. How many of you have done that? <laughs> yeah, I see some hands out there. Well, when you do that, are your kids going to come to you? No, they won't. So when you have this technology talk with your kids, I'm going to show you what that should look like. But first, we have to concentrate on one simple foundational premise of the technology talk on what you are responsible for your kids. There is no such thing as privacy for children. Can I get an amen? amen? Yes. That you are responsible for your kids because you buy them the device. I don't care if Nana, Nonu, Grandpa, Grandpa, Tia, Tia, you bought them that device. They don't own it. You allow them to have it. They own nothing because you're responsible. So when we talk about this technology talk, 
I talked to parents something about called the golden ticket. What the golden ticket says is that you're gonna sit down with your kids and have that technology talk. You're gonna go through their contacts, you're gonna monitor remotely, and you're gonna sit down with them and say, man, I, went, I saw this guy speaking at the school the other day. I had no idea what was going on on your social media. Listen, I know mom and dad were going like this to you, but none of that. If you come to us, and if you feel like someone's making you do something you don't want to do, or somebody making you feel bad about yourself, you need to come to us. If you come to us, we're going to give you that golden ticket. And that golden ticket means that we're not gonna give you consequences. We're not gonna ground you. You're not gonna lose your phone. You're not, we're not gonna keep you from your friends because ladies and gentlemen, the average internet predator has 250 victims in their lifetime, 250. And odds are if they're doing something bad to your kid, they're doing it to 20, 30 others at the same time. So the technology talk is so important. I've got another question for you. How many of you allow your children to charge their devices in their rooms at night? The common denominator in all my sextortion child exploitation cases is that when the parent allows the, you to char them to charge their devices in their rooms at night, you're sleeping. They shut the door so you can't hear them. It's not a matter of talking. It's typing, reading, and performing. With apps like the Chromebook they get from school going into Google Hangouts, Uvu, Omegle, Skype, House Party. These are video chat sites that our kids are using. And there are two to six people in that chat room while they're in their bedroom. Remember when we used to play spin a bottle in truth or dare, somebody's basement, the park, wherever? Remember when we were kids? Well, our kids are playing truth or dare. You know where they're playing it? On their devices in their rooms at night. So when the people in the room, it's your kids turn for the dare, we dare you to flash us, okay. No big deal, ha, ha, ha. Three days later, that person who was in the room who did a screen capture of what your son or daughter just did, hey, how do you like your new Instagram account without you flashing everybody? If you don't give me pictures and videos every week when I want them, this is going out to your entire class. This is gonna go out to everybody you know in your family if you don't give me the picture and the videos that I want. And what you're gonna say, Oh my God, I can't believe it. What am I gonna do? I gotta go to my parents. If I go to my parents, you're gonna be grounded. We're gonna take your phone away. You're not gonna see the light of day. I don't wanna be grounded. I don't wanna lose my phone. I don't wanna want embarrass myself. It's only one picture. It's only one video. I'll just take the video. It's never one picture. It's never one video. It'll continue, continue, continue till your kids cannot handle it anymore. The National Center of Missing and Exploited Children, ladies and gentlemen, has created a fantastic PSA. And what I've just described for you is a new phenomenon and a crime called sextortion. Hi, Zach. Here's another video from my special guy. I can't believe we haven't talked all day. I wish you went to my school or a little closer so we could finally meet. Hey, kiddo. Dinner in an hour. Don't spend too long on the phone. I know you've been waiting for this for a while, so I wanted to give you something special. <laughs> Is this okay?
are you? Why are you doing this? responsible for your children. We need to monitor. We need to talk to the technology, talk to them. We need to check their contacts because we want to raise great digital citizens. And you are responsible for that. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. So some of the things that we cover when we talk to students and parents is that we'll talk about predators on their social networks. We'll talk about what the parent's responsibility is for kids' technology, what they should and shouldn't do. We're also going to talk about the apps our, their kids are using. We're going to give them real-life examples in this training to show them that this doesn't happen somewhere else. Because a lot of the kids, when I go to schools, they're like, oh, that don't happen here. Parents are like, that don't happen here. Well, parents suffer from a disease. This disease is called the NMK syndrome. You know what that is? Not my kid. It's a, a proven fact that even in Naperville, when we were teaching parents at community events, only 1% of the student population parents would show up because they suffer from not my kid. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, when I have parents walking around God's green earth, and they're thinking to themselves like this, I would never buy my 10-year-old a cell phone. No way. She is way too young. Uh-uh. Not going to happen. She only has an iPad. Mm -hmm. They're the same thing. Every app I can put on an iPhone, I can put on an iPad. And I want you to know, as parents and grandparents watching this training, that if your grandchild has an iPad, they're at more danger because predators know if they can get to a kid with an iPad, the parents are probably not checking it. And the younger they can manipulate a child into child abuse, the easier the target is. So please understand this training that nationally exchange can give your school districts is going to be amazing. And we will save more kids than ever before. So some of the other things that we teach parents is we want to show them what evidence they have to gather if, God forbid, something happens to their child. And we also teach students what they should do if someone cyber bullies them or sextorts them or sexters them. We want to empower both parents, students, and faculty to let them know that there's a protocol set forth and we can find out who anybody is at any time when it comes to gaming online and social networking. So I just want to give you a little overview. Now that you saw the TED Talk, you kind of understand the dangers when it comes to kids and their technology. But here's one of the biggest reasons why our children and grandchildren get affected. Did you know when I am teaching in elementary schools and I'm teaching fourth and fifth graders, how old are fourth and fifth graders? Take a guess. So they are like 9, 10, 11 years old, right? Yeah. Did you know that you have to be 13 years of age in order to have a social network? 13. For their TikTok, for their Twitter, for their Snapchat, for their Instagram, you must be 13. So when I travel all over the country on behalf of Exchange, I ask kids, how many of you in fourth and fifth grade have a TikTok? They all raise their hand. How many of you have a Snapchat? They all raise their hand. Because this is what happens. When a child who is 9 or 10 years old wants what their older brother and sisters have, or everybody in school, they go and complain to the parent. And they say, 
Mom, all my friends at school have a TikTok and a Snapchat. Why can't I have one? It's not fair. When parents want to give everything they can to their kids, but they don't understand the responsibility that goes along with that. So let's face it. Our kids today are not the best mathematicians in the world, right? Probably because of core math, <laughs> right? So when they are asked by the social network that they want to create, what is your year of birth? That decides whether they can have a social network or not. So the kids will say, let's see, I was born in 2010. Do I go up with my date of birth? Or I go down with my date of birth in order to be 13. Oh, heck with it. I will just round up to 2000. So I ask kids, how many of you have rounded up to the year 2000 to create your social network? Half of the grades raise their hand. So when I'm talking to these kids and they put their date of birth as, year of birth is 2000, how old are they today? Take a guess. How old are they? They're 20. So if I put my date of birth at 2000 and they, it's today, they're 20 years old. Now I have nine and 10 year olds because they didn't want to sit there and figure out the math. They put in their date of birth as 2000. Who do you think is going to come talk to them? Adults. Who do you think is going to send them inappropriate pictures and videos? Adults. Who do you think is going to ask them for inappropriate pictures and videos? Adults, because they're posting that they're 20 years old. These are the things our parents must understand, ladies and gentlemen. And through exchange, we can give them this training in bits and pieces. So here's a picture of me being at the, at the um, Freeport, Illinois. And I asked these kids, how many of you put a date of birth of 2000? This is how many fourth and fifth graders raise their hands. It is so unbelievable to me. So these are some of the topics that we will discuss in Cyber Parenting 101, and you can bring this training right to your school district. So what do you remember? When you left the house at a young age, say 9, 10, 11 years old, when you went out to go play with your friends, what are some of the things that your parents told you? Was it, be careful? Was it, don't talk to strangers? How many of you have heard, be aware of your surroundings, don't just wander around not knowing where you're at? And don't go near that stranger's car. Watch out for those white vans, right? And don't even get in a stranger's car. If somebody says, can you help me look for your pup, my puppy? Or why don't you get in my car and help me look? We always teach our kids never to get in a stranger's car. Well, today, ladies and gentlemen, do you know what parents are doing? Because they're way too busy to pick their kids up or take their kids places because they're too busy working. Why in the heck do I now have parents sending Ubers to pick up their children? Ubers and Lyfts. Yes, because parents are so damn lazy that they do not want to leave work, stop what they're doing, stay at home, watch soap operas, and they don't want to pick up their kids, so they'll just get on their phones. Oh, I'll just send her an Uber. Yes, this is what parents are doing today. I have some Catholic schools in Naperville that actually have to send mail to the parents. We are not going to release your children to an Uber. In doing some research on Uber drivers, these are different headlines where the Uber drivers actually had molested and raped their rides. You see how important this training is? Just because the technology exists doesn't mean we have to use it as parents. Because if Uncle Joe couldn't pick up my kid from soccer practice, or my kid couldn't get a ride to practice because he waited too long to get a ride? Guess what? You don't go. I am sure their whole life is not going to be wrecked by missing one practice. It's true. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, 
We need to be training our parents that this is not acceptable. We need to training our kids the dangers in this. And this is what we bring out in cyberparenting-101.com. So some of the other things that we do for parents is that many parents, as you saw in the TED Talk, they actually threaten their kid into compliance. And as you saw in the TED Talk, we talked about the golden ticket. You see, not only are parents responsible for their kids' food, clothing, shelter, and education, they're responsible for the technology, and there is no such thing as privacy for students. Parents are responsible. You see, the frontal cortex of our kids' brains are not developed enough to handle what social networking and gaming online throws at them, especially with the amount of predators there are. And these are all things we nationally can get this message through the school systems to the parents, the faculty, and the children. So in this training, we talk about a lot of the apps that our kids are using and a lot of the dangers that are involved in a lot of these things. Things like TikTok, Roblox, Minecraft, things like YOLO. These are video chat sites that predators will visit to talk to children. So one of the biggest social networks out there that you have to be 13 to be in is TikTok. In TikTok, this is the biggest social network in the world right now. So what happens in TikTok, people make videos, and it's owned by the Chinese. And they're doing facial recognition, putting names to faces, and all kinds of data that you would never imagine people collect. But this gives an opportunity for predators to make videos and talk to your children and grandchildren. Let me give you an example. So in, uh, in a Catholic school in uh, Chicago, uh, so in every school I go to physically, I will give you, if you are the sponsor, I will give you a flyer with the Exchange Club and Be Sure Training. And we talk about the topics, and I list all of the icons that we're going to talk about. Well, right before the training that I did for a Catholic school in Chicago, a mom looked at the flyer two hours before the training. She's like, TikTok? I know TikTok. She's on TikTok. Talk. What's wrong with TikTok? She signed into her daughter's TikTok account, and this is the email that she sent me right before I went live in the training. So this mom actually went in and checked her kids' videos, and she saw that one of her twin girls were actually showing her breasts in some of the videos and scantily clad. If parents are not in their kids' technology, if parents are not having the technology talk with their kids, they will be led around by their noses to do all kinds of horrible things you would never imagine. In order for us to eradicate child exploitation and child abuse online, we need to empower our parents, we need to empower our students, and we need to empower the faculty on what to do. So I want to kind of take you through what this looks like. So if you're at home, go ahead and go to cyberparenting-101.com. Cyberparenting-101.com. In cyberparenting for parents, we have, again, three different um, packages. We have the student series. Now, these are all of my teachings that I went to in the studio. We cut these into small five minute to 20 minute segments. So there's about 12 to 15 different segments in every single package. However, in the parent presentation, we also do it in Spanish. Really amazing stuff here, guys. So please understand, the Exchange Club can sponsor a school and get this training for a whole entire year to give this training to the school. What the school principal can do every month, he can send out to the parents because we know parents are not gonna show up because of NMK syndrome, right? My kid would never do that, so I don't need to go. Well, this is a way your schools and your community can send out this little snippet of video once a month, twice a month. 
And then it insulates the school when a parent comes to them and says, Some, these, these kids are cyberbullying my son. What are you doing to protect them? Well, now the school can say, well, we, we sent you videos to show you how you can protect your kid by monitoring software, going through his messages. We show you exactly what to do. So it's really on the parent to protect the child. Yes, we will do our part, and our faculty is even trained, but it insulates the school. And then if the school has some type of incident, whether it's a cyberbullying incident or a sexting or a sextortion incident, here's what they can do. If the incident happens, the principal can type back an email to the parents. We had a sexting incident in school today. We want to let you know that we are handling it appropriately as we were trained. Please refer to this training sponsored by the Exchange Club in order for you to protect your kids. Now, that is immediate. It is a five to 15 minute video, and now the parents are more aware if the school resource officer or in the health class that they had an incident in school, they can go to the pack and just pick out that video, play the video that pertains to the subject matter, and have a productive conversation about it in school. And along with the student presentations, there are two or three test questions per video. So it's actually a curriculum that the Exchange Club can bring to the schools in your area. Absolutely amazing stuff. So I want to take you to the website right now to show you exactly what it looks like. So all you have to do is go to cyberparenting-101.com. Now there are two actual programs that are running in one website. This program is for the court system. Or if you would like to, as a parent, go through a curriculum with your kid, again, these are 15 to 20 minute uh, videos and there's a 10 question, there's like a six to 10 question test in between the videos and it's like Netflix. So once the first video is done, it'll start loading if you wanna continue. You watch the video, take a quiz, watch a video, take a quiz, and there's a final test as well as a certification. So parents can be cyber certified if they want to. Now we're talking about the school end of things where Exchange Club is going to sponsor the package for that school. All you have to do is go to cyberparenting-101.com and go to school video packages. And here you will see exactly the curriculum, okay, for students, parents, and school faculty. Here's a little sample that I'd like to play for you right now to show you exactly what the videos are like. Here we go. So in order for you to insulate yourself of being involved in any crime, there's something called the two-prong test. In the two-prong test, you have to do something to make it stop and, not or, and tell a responsible adult. For example, if you receive now what's going to happen when they send that picture, that person's going to say, "Hey, now that I have your picture, how do you like your new Instagram account? This picture that you took of yourself, I'm going to send it to your entire class if you don't start making me videos and pictures every single week. If you don't make me these pictures and videos, I'm going to send it to your class, your coaches, your parents, your family. Everybody's going to know you take these pictures if you don't do this." Now, what is your child going to say to themselves if you're not having the technology talk? Let's say you... I'm Dr. Aaron Weiner. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist, and I direct addiction treatment centers outside of Chicago. I'd like to talk to you a little bit today about the health implications of vaping, and in particular, vaping THC and nicotine. So what a lot of folks don't understand is that your brain actually is continuing to grow and develop all throughout your life up until about the age of 25 to 28. Uh, certain parts all of it right. are... Now that I gave you the tools, I want to show you how we investigate internet crime. So here's the, some of the questions you have to ask yourself. How do I report cybercrime to make it stop? Now remember, if someone's doing a sexual crime to your child online or on their device or on their social networks or in their gaming platform, they're probably doing it to 10, 20, 30 other kids all at the same time all over the world and they need to be stopped. Here's how you stop them. So first ask yourself, does it fit a crime? Such as...
Now that you saw what the videos were like, you'll see in the student series, these are the topics. In the parent series, here's are the topics. In the faculty series, here is how the faculty needs to respond when kids disclose or they get information on a child being abused in school. So with this partnership, ladies and gentlemen, the Exchange Club can be more powerful. The Exchange Club can now have the ability to make a difference in the schools in your area. So what we're talking about is it's usually $1,000 for the student package, and then it goes down from there. If you have numerous schools in your school district, it is per school but we can accommodate any type of pricing and packaging that fits in your budget. Again, it's not about the money and these costs to run the website, and that's really all we're paying for, but you need to understand that this message for your schools is proactive, and we may be saving some kids that didn't even realize they need saving. Here's my information. Be sure consulting.com is my main website. You can call me at 630-461-0044 or send me an email, info at cyberparenting-101.com. Thank you for attending this Exchange Club training, and I can't wait to see you all again next year and present right in front of you. Thank you very much, everyone, and have a safe summer.